Ladies and gentlemen, we have been witnessing tonight a deeply cynical proposition uh, deliver a farrago of straw men, distortions, deflections, false accusations, and of course, straight up pro Israel propaganda. Then again, Hearing Melanie Phillips come here and champion the rights of gays in Israel in order to defend Zionism was well worth the entry ticket in and of itself. <laughs> so let's be clear about what this motion is tonight, because it's the motion you all have to vote on in good conscience. The motion says, quote, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. It doesn't say some anti-Zionists are anti-Semites, which is true. It doesn't say anti-Zionism can sometimes turn into anti-Semitism which is true. It doesn't say that anti-Semites often use anti-Zionism as cover, as an excuse for their bigotry and racism, which is true. I wouldn't oppose any of that. But that's not what the motion says. The motion says, ridiculously, sweepingly, offensively, ahistorically, that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. That merely being opposed to Zionism, a political ideology, remember, is inherently, by definition, ipso facto, anti-Semitic, which is absurd. Think about the implications of voting for that tonight. You'd be saying every anti-Zionist, every anti-Zionist, is a bigot, a racist, and an anti-Semite, by definition. Even the many Jewish and Israeli anti-Zionists. So Elam, Jewish historian, born and raised in Israel, served in the Israeli military. He's an anti-Semite. That's what they want you to believe. That's what they want you to vote for tonight. So is the former Speaker of Israel's own parliament, the Knesset, Avraham Berg. Melody would say he's a self-hating Jew. So is my Intercept colleague, Naomi Klein, the acclaimed author and climate change activist. So is Noam Chomsky. He's an anti-Semite as well. They want you to vote for them and say that the thousands of Haredi, ultra-Orthodox, anti-Zionist Jews who oppose Zionism for religious theological reasons, they're anti-Semites too. That's what they want. That is what they are asking you to vote for tonight. It's absurd and it's ahistorical. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the 35 top Israeli Jewish scholars and academics, historians of the Holocaust, who came together just a few months ago and published an open letter in which they wrote, and I quote, many victims of the Holocaust opposed Zionism. On the other hand, many anti-Semites supported Zionism. It is nonsensical and inappropriate to identify anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. End quote. Are they anti-Semites too? Really? All 35 of them? By the way, in terms of the history they refer to in their letter, it is an undeniable, indisputable fact that many, many European anti-Semites, as Ilan alluded to, did support Zionism at the outset. They did embrace the founder of Zionism, Theodor Herzl, because for their own selfish racist reasons, they shared his goal of treating Jews as a foreign, separate nation and getting them out of Europe. Take British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour, author of the 1917 Balfour Declaration, in favor of Zionism. Balfour dismissed Jews as, quote, an alien and hostile people. He sponsored legislation to keep Jewish refugees out of the UK. The only Jewish member of the cabinet at that time, Sir Edwin Samuel Montague, opposed the Balfour Declaration and called Zionism a mischievous political creed. Yet apparently, according to the proposition tonight, Montague's the anti-Semite and Balfour isn't. That's the madness that you're going to vote for tonight. This motion is not just ahistorical, not just absurd, not just offensive. It's a distraction. It's a dangerous distraction from the very real and murderous anti-Semitism that is on the rise and that comes not from the left, not from anti-Zionists, not from the BDS movement, as Melanie would have you believe, but from a resurgent far right. In Germany, according to official figures, in 2017, nine out of ten anti-Semitic hate crimes were carried out by far right or neo-Nazi groups. I live in the US. Two synagogue attacks in the space of six months. Twelve innocent Jewish worshippers murdered in cold blood by far right white nationalists. And yet the proposition tonight, like the Netanyahu government, like the Trump administration, want you to ludicrously believe that the threat to Jews right now, the real rise in the new anti-Semitism, comes from the anti-Zionists, from the BDS movement, from the Palestinians, and not from the murderous far right. When the irony is that Netanyahu, prime minister of the world's only Jewish state, has been cozying up to some of the worst anti-Semites on the right, who also happen to be proud Zionists. Let's be clear about that. 
many of the most prominent, influential, right-wing anti-Semites today, Donald Trump, Viktor Orban, Steve Bannon, they're not anti-Zionists, they're hard-right, hardcore Zionists and pals of Netanyahu. Let's also just deal with some of the canards we've heard tonight from the proposition. Adat mentioned that it's anti-Semitic to suggest Israel is born in sin. Every black American I know says to me and says to everyone else that the United States was born in sin. Slavery was a sin at the start of the United States. No one accuses them of being anti-white racists or anti-American racists. It's just a statement of historical fact. They say the proposition that when you oppose Zionism, you're denying Jews and no one else a right to self-determination, which is just flat false. Not every nation or ethnic group wants a state, gets a state, has a state. Ask the Kurds, ask the Catalans, ask the Scots. <laughs> there are more than 5,000 ethnic groups in the world today, but only 193 member states at the United Nations. Take the Druze, an Arab ethnic minority group. 100,000 or so live in Israel. Do they have a right to self-determination? If they create a Druze state inside of Israel, is Einat okay with that? If Einat says, no, you can't have a Druze state, is she racist towards the Druze? National self-determination doesn't always correspond with statehood. Melanie says, it's not racist for the Kurds to aspire to statehood. She's right, it's not. But the flip side of that is true as well. The British government, the American government, most of the EU governments do not support Kurdish statehood. Does that mean the British government, all of us, are racist towards the Kurds? People have legitimate debates about where state lines should be drawn, which states should be created, how those states exist. It's not racism or bigotry to have that legitimate day. It can be, but it's not by definition. The issue is not whether uh, Jews deserve a homeland or have a historic connection to the land of Palestine. Of course they do. The issue is whether those historic and religious claims justify creating and expanding a Jewish majority state in which one ethnic group is privileged over another, while another group is permanently disenfranchised, dispossessed, and subjected to endless military occupation. That's what we're here to oppose tonight. Nothing more, nothing less. And has the proposition even stopped to ask what it means to say to that oppressed group, the Palestinian people, to say to them that you're either a Zionist, you either subscribe to the ideology of your oppressor, or you're a racist. What kind of choice is that? <laughs> Melanie says tonight that denying Jewish nationhood is racist, it's anti-Semitic. And yet she has no issue erasing the Palestinian people from the face of the planet. She said in her speech that only the Jews have a unique right to nationhood and statehood in that part of the world, not the Palestinians. What is that? Is that not bigotry? Is that not racism? Is that not wiping a people off the face of the planet? But this is what you'll be voting for tonight if you vote for the proposition. This is what the Israeli, pro-Israeli argument has always been, to silence the Palestinians, to silence their opposition to occupation, to silence their resistance as Palestinian citizens living inside of Israel, to a nationalistic ideology which treats them like second-class citizens, which denies them many of the rights and privileges of the majority. And one thing I want to make clear to you tonight, you don't have to be an anti-Zionist to vote with me and Ilan tonight. You don't even have to be a critic of Israel. You can be the biggest supporter of Israel in the world and vote with the opposition. All you have to be is someone who recognizes that it is an egregious smear, a naked slur to claim, to label those of us, Jews and non-Jews alike, who oppose a political ideology in good faith because we think it's unjust, iniquitous, oppressive, to label us as anti-Semites for holding that political view. All you have to be is someone who recognizes that the claim that we hate or are opposed to Jews simply because we don't agree with the idea of a state that privileges one group over another makes us racists. So let me repeat, to be clear, tonight's debate is not about Israel per se. It's not about whether you support or oppose Israel or the occupation. It's about whether you believe the proposition have made the case that those of us who oppose Israel in its current form, who oppose the political ideology underpinning it, that we're racists. That's the bar that has to be crossed tonight. It's that simple. And I'll tell you this for free. <laughs> Those of us who value our free speech, who don't want to see anti-Semitism cynically weaponized by supporters of Israel, who oppose that ideology of Zionism in good faith with good reason, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not be silenced. We will not be bullied. 
we will not be cowed, we will not be smeared. So ladies and gentlemen, stand with us against this unjust, inaccurate, irresponsible, dishonest, ludicrous, simplistic, sweeping motion which conflates Judaism, a great and ancient religion, with Zionism, a very modern political ideology, and in doing so risks emptying anti-Semitism of all meaning. Ladies and gentlemen, stand with us tonight, oppose this awful motion.